This is the official podcast number 281, a brief weekly update on the Halo TV show. It's still bad and getting worse. Uh, That was Charlie from the TV show entertainment department. Back to you, Kyle. (laughs) Well, Jackson and I just wrapped up recording our watch along for the Patreon of episode four, by far the worst episode. So apparently... Uh, in this Halo universe, and again, I've never been exposed to this like storyline or the franchise before this TV show, but the Covenants and the UNS, NCS, whatever the fuck they're called, they've been feuding <laughs> NCIS, for like decades, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And at no point has apparently any scientist decided to actually sit down and translate the Covenant language. And only in, what's the year, 2500 or something, when one Spartan... Yeah, they're, they're like, one of the Spartans uh, says, oh, this is a needle gun. I heard one of the Covenant's aliens refer to it as a needle gun. And a scientist catches this, and she's like, wait, you can help us translate? <gasps> we could translate this language! It could give us the upper hand! It's like, we really... No shit! Well, well to be, to, before you continue, Jackson, it's clear to me you guys aren't paying enough attention. So, Probably not. in an offhanded comment from her to her father... She meant as she was like patting herself on the ass. She mentioned that she's made great strides in understanding their language, but it's hit a wall. So by the Spartan calling it a skumbak or whatever she called the needler, it was enough to trigger like, a, oh, perhaps we could use the Spartans as a cipher to figure out what these words mean. So she has been trying unsuccessfully, but now that she so has it, the the code it's, it's, here. It seems like player. she's the only one working on this little side. It's like a little side project at, at UNSC headquarters or whatever. Like she's the only one working on this. But surely this would be the first thing most like uh, organizations would work on if invaded by like an alien force. It, it would be to learn their language, right? So that we could come literally. Up with, like, that's the first thing. That's like what I find the most realistic about other alien movies like Contact and Arrival Arrival, is the first thing they do is they hire a bunch of mathematician eggheads from like Harvard. They pull them out of a lecture like, we need your skills, professor. And they they go like, for what? And they go, it's classified. And then they helicopter them to the alien sites to decipher a bunch of hieroglyphs and shit. You didn't do this? You didn't even go back to like rewatch the helmet footage from the Spartans fighting the aliens and never heard the aliens (laughs) use certain words? Why did yeah. Why did it take like a Spartan randomly dropping a word? The Spartan, by the way, whose character arc currently, if you're not watching the TV show at home, uh, her character arc involves her taking out her emotion suppressant pills in her spine. And now she dyed her hair and she's giving <laughs> attitude to her parents. Yeah, I'm not joking. Yeah. She like lo- she took it out and immediately logged onto like Tumblr. <laughs> and that's it. She she dyed her hair red with gun polish mm-hmm. and now she's going around with this it's not a phase mom you don't care about me you don't even care what i think attitude i'm not a and machine it's insufferable yeah now what i, I don't understand is what what led her to taking out the ch- the thing because she basically only saw john do it she she wouldn't know that she's got one in her right or oh, she no, of course they, they they of course know that they have one in them The reason, so as I understand it, the reason she's going through this rebellious phase is because John's going through this rebellious phase and they have a lot of respect for John and she in particular really likes John and wants to be like him. So the fact that he's, you know, in this emotional fucking stupor where all he does is walk around moping and having (laughs) memories, she now wants to do that. I thought he didn't know that he had the thing until Cortana told him. No, well, do you remember? Are you even watching it? Jesus, no, he was trying to take it out by himself. <laughs> Cortana just told him where to cut. Uh, okay. Gee, I'm glad I don't watch it with you, Jackson. Good lord. <laughs> well, to be well, fair, we zone out. Just it's, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, then yeah, you're we don't watch it like as intently as you do, but. But it's not even as if with your explanations, as if the show suddenly is better or makes oh, no, more it's, sense. It's just it's stupid worse. in a different way. No, I, I think it's worse. <laughs> Now, I have a question as someone who's only ever played the games and hasn't seen the show. Don't the Spartan armor translate the Covenant language automatically? Uh, If you turn on subtitles, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, because isn't the whole point that in Halo 1 and later on, Master Chief can understand what they're saying just by wearing the armor? 
okay, so from what I remember in Halo Reach, they made a big deal about this in like uh, like leading up to the launch of Halo Reach. They said that they were bringing back authentic uh, Covenant speech, so all of the alien voices were in like alien dialect, so people couldn't understand them, and it was like a big deal. But I think after Halo One, yeah, like I, I don't think they could understand the Covenant speech, but the Covenant mm. just started talking English, so. It was never so does this show take place before all that then? It doesn't take place it in doesn't, Halo. Yeah, just forget the, the, about okay. the games. So they just, threw that, they just threw that plot point the fuck out just to make drama for the show. No, Andrew. No, just forget about anything Halo. I'll just say, I don't think you guys have done a good job of explaining just how awful this show is. Go so this it, has nothing, it has nothing to do with the games. It doesn't okay. reference the games at all. It, it doesn't, doesn't even try. Okay. It, yeah, we just now got our yeah. first mention of Halo... The Covenant are having... They have, like, a fucking blessed human being that helps lead them to the promised land. And going into this, I expected it to be just kind of mindless sci-fi action at the very least, which would be enjoyably bad. But that would have been... There's, that would have oh, been There's no action. If, it, if there was yeah. action, it would have been good. <laughs> there is. There has been only one scene where they have fought the Covenant. Oh, my God. And the God. scene lasted, like, 15, 20 minutes, maybe. And it was horrible CGI that was so lazy. There was a part where they forgot to color the plasma pistol in post... So he throws a foam plasma pistol. We, I remember we linked the CGI assault rifle, which he also threw. I watched that. Like the, yeah, it's so mm -hmm. fucking bad. The one time they've done action in the show, and it was awful. Since then, uh, Master Chief John has only put his helmet on three times, and all three times have been in the last two minutes of the episode. Episode two... I believe the end of episode three and then episode four, he puts it on and off like a thousand times as he's like tran or going through memories. And, but at no point is he ever really master chief in this show. He doesn't do anything. They don't yeah, fight, he doesn't anyone. fight anyone. Yeah. It's he so has boring. stumbling around like he's got dementia basically the entire <laughs> show. And then, by the way, so in clips that people may have seen in the back, you see all these old timey cars, like actual cars that exist in our day and age in every fucking scene. And it's I guess their excuse was that this is a, I guess, a poor outpost on some desert planets where the people, they're basically living with technology from hundreds of years ago. But it's still mm -hmm. so lame because even a, a has been Spartan, a guy who used to be a Spartan. In episode four, he's going around with a fucking revolver and he like yeah. misses his chance to kill an assassin because he had to reload his revolver. Like, what, <laughs> is this the Wild West? Well, why are we fighting like so, tiny weapons it's a now? gold revolver. Though. I, I cool. want to know if you two have noticed this or if you've brought it up because I feel like I'm taking fucking crazy pills since I'm the only one who's bothered by it. It is a bit of a nitpick, I'll fully admit. Kwa Han, the, the main girl, you know she's, like, been cleaned up for wounds and everything, but she's still wearing the exact same bloody clothes that she was found in for over the last, like, two weeks of real time <laughs> in the show. You, have you noticed that? It is still bloody clothes, even though she's, like, lived at Soren's place, been cleaned thoroughly for wounds, she yeah. still is choosing to sh slip into the exact same clothes that are covered in her fucking father's blood. Why? Yeah, Jackson and I kept pointing out that also, like, she had been on a fucking spaceship and a hotel for, like, weeks at that point without washing her fucking face once like you still have blood yeah. on you can you but at least go to the sink rinse yourself off a little and she's still putting on the same goddamn clothes they only had a single costume for her and couldn't bother to find something else or at least do something well, that, else that seems like it would have been easy like so easy to fix it, sa it sounds like they tried to take continuity to like an extreme level like showing that they were hyper focused on continuity by keeping her in those dirty clothes like which makes would no be sense yeah. yeah exactly but yeah, that makes still, no sense. like it would be easy to just let change clothes like you're not shooting it back to back well you know you're not shooting the entire scene, uh, movie tv series in one day so just change clothes come up with a new outfit it, that wouldn't be hard yeah, she slept over at this guy's, like, cathedral citadel at, on that asteroid where he has a really nice crib. They couldn't get her clean clothes. Don't they have a laundry, laundry machine, at least? Like, nothing? Maybe a sponge to rinse the fucking thing? There, no. Their arc and in general girl's plot is just is the so worst. dumb, yeah. Oh, that her girl does is nothing. I don't know why or what the fuck. I don't know if any of this similar thing has been in, in any, like, books or the games, but why is she even a character in this show? Nothing is happening. No, it's because it's trying to be like the Mandalorian or something. I think she's like the baby Yoda of the show. Except well, then really she'd still be with annoying. she'd still be with John. Then it doesn't. It genuinely doesn't make sense. I think I it's. Don't know. 
I think it's meant to show a different side of the universe, like the UNSC versus Rebels, obviously. But, but it's not UNSC versus Rebels, it's yeah, one it's, girl versus Rebels, and she gets mm-hmm. everyone killed around her while contributing nothing. Yeah. While contributing nothing, and while the whole time saying this, by the way, she's f- like 15. A 15 emotional teenager going around saying, I just need to meet my father's generals. And then what? Like, they're going to give you the nuclear codes? How the fuck are you going to lead, like, a revolution? You're a child. Just leave. Yeah, and then she's getting in everyone's way. She finally meets her aunt and immediately gets her shot and killed. (laughs) Yeah, immediately. Immediately (laughs) gets her shot and killed. And by the way, the badass Spartan that is basically escorting her, he gets carjacked. Like, he's a (laughs) 16-year-old boy with his first car. Like, how... He's completely befuddled by this, too. Like, they stole my spaceship? Like, yeah. How do you, it's like he, it's like he didn't come from like a crime ridden asteroid he, he's like the sheriff of a crime ridden asteroid and he doesn't know about carjackings right he has like zero street smarts how the fuck are you like anything the ruler of anything it's embarrassing and then the worst part of course everything it, like the props are so bad you guys like yeah. at home if you haven't watched the show watch one episode all the props all the armor the cool spartan armor and shit you can see like the little specks of dust and shit from when they were spraying the pieces of plastic to make the armor props. They look so bad. All the styrofoam the- and plastic. Soren's isn't good, but I thought they did a good job with Master Chiefs. It's just he never fucking wears it, so it's hard to like appreciate it. There was one egregious Not- scene in the newest episode where he takes off the helmet. No, sorry, he puts on the helmet, gets in a warthog, drives like five seconds, and, and then he hops out and takes it off again immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why? That's, that's the whole episode. <laughs> I think the best thing about the Halo TV show is all the ass. They dedicate so much screen yeah. time to showing ass cheeks. Like the villain <laughs> had his cheeks just like fucking flopping around for like a, like a two minute scene of just him smoking in a bathtub. And then you've seen Master Chief's ass a couple times. They call him Master Cheeks. Like it's... Yeah. It's so much ass. So wait, there's so a there's human a f- villain at some point? Yeah, she works with the Covenant, and there's well, another human yeah, villain who too. works with the UNSC. That doesn't yeah, make well, a lot of sense. I thought he was a rebel, but they're also, like, they've got the protection of the UNSC. Right? Imagine oh, Space maybe. Hitler, Andrew. It's literally just Space Hitler, and he walks around in big, fashy, like, uh, you know, Nazi get-ups, and he basically talks like them, too. It's... Because that's how you tell that shoulder he's pads evil. Have like yeah, a bubble this, wrapping around them too. Man, this just sounds less and less like Halo. I don't think Halo's ever really had a big human villain, have they? Like a really big, important one. Uh, there's times where the UNSC seems incompetent. But yeah, it's but never I, coming from like a place of evil. Here, the Covenant yeah. is the last thing they care about. <laughs> uh, no one gives a fuck about the yeah. Covenant. <laughs> yeah, no, genuinely, the Covenant seems like an afterthought. Like, no one cares about this giant spacefaring uh, civilization that's entered the universe at all. Well, the people who care the least are the people that just lost their entire goddamn planet to it, basically. The Covenant came in, killed the entire camp, killed their leader, killed everyone, and the girl hasn't said a fucking word about that. She's like, I hate the new rebel guy that leads us. That guy sucks. I hate him. I don't know. Who's the Covenant? I hate that guy. I need to go there. Yeah, it's, it's just so makes no sense at all. It's like you have bigger worries than some guy playing Hitler cosplays in a, in your neighborhood. Like this civilization is about to nuke your planet. <laughs> it's so shit. It's so bad. And the US NSC or whatever, they're uh, they are so painfully incompetent because nobody seems to have oh accountability. God, yeah. It almost feels like a high school. Everyone's just like gossiping behind everyone else's back there's no accountability no one knows what anyone else is doing you could literally probably get away with murder in their headquarters and nobody would know what to do they probably don't even have like security cameras <laughs> why were alarm bells going off the second one of the spotters took out the emotion chip <laughs> like n- there's no kind of like awareness that um what's her name the spotting kai it? i think no 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 oh. kai uh, she took out her chip and no one seems to care like this isn't a big news at all like they didn't have a little chip in the in the emotion uh, capsule that like let them know it's ridiculous there's so much ineptitude i think the only decent character so far is halsey i think halsey's like passable uh, serviceable and somewhat true to the lore from what as i understand it so i don't mind halsey and the actress playing her is not doing terrible uh, that's like the one compliment i could fish from the from the show so far 
The one compliment that Kyra and I yeah. had was the scene with the hunter worms. We, I kind of liked that scene. I thought it was cool. Oh, with the human controlling the worms. Well, just the worms. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Where the worms were all crawling across the walls and the ceiling and just taking out all the people. But that scene also lasted like ten seconds. I mean, yeah. it, was, it was cool, but <laughs> I mean, ten seconds we'll out of a get. show that is an hour every episode. By the way, yeah. Oh my god, it's so long. Needlessly long. <clears throat> so have we told you, Andrew? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking boring, man. Unless you really just like characters in like uh, genuine amnesia, like that's all they do is just look <laughs> fucking confused and doing nothing. And the show's not but for you. It sounds like there's just absolutely nothing to enjoy. It sounds like on its own, it's not a fun or well written like property no it sounds like in terms of servicing halo and the franchise it doesn't do that at all and it sounds like in terms nope. of quality as a show it just doesn't work so I, there's nothing even fun to look yeah. at like they've only yeah. had good visuals like once or twice maybe look, the, the time that i knew i wasn't interested in the show because i didn't even think it'd be like fun bad is when they had that combat scene and they cut to a first person view of the spartan fighting the covenant and keep in mind, they have like seven video games to reference for how that should look. And boy, it just looked <laughs> like shit. Like, yeah, not even close. Terrible. That's what it's, I knew. That's the dumbest attitude to the we're not going to play the games. That's like if um, they made Better Call Saul, but they decided we're not going to watch Breaking Bad first. Mm -hmm. like, uh, why? You're trying to mesh this into the universe. Why would you do this? It's just I'm insane sure that, like, the fucking books that they said they read to make the show are based off the games and the universe of the games. So you, they didn't even... Imagine trying to write something and then saying, oh, I didn't look at any primary sources. I just looked at what other people oh, said. So it's like... So they read the books that are based on the game. So it's like a game of telephone. Exactly. At the end, it's just all garbled no, this is, mess. As I understand it... As I understand it, no one actually read the books on staff. They consulted 343, <laughs> who said they read the books. Oh, my uh, I, God. I'm pretty sure the director, the showrunner, whoever, didn't even bother looking at the books. Because, they, like I said, they haven't used anything from any of the books or any genuine well, that's, Halo anything. That's your problem right there. They used 343 Studios. Maybe that's why it's so bad. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah it's, it, that's definitely a contributing factor. Yeah. I don't know how Microsoft hasn't gone to 343 Industries and just completely cleaned house after every single inept... They've destroyed Halo, like Microsoft's biggest IP, biggest brand. It should have been their crowning jewel of this new generation. And just release after release after release, project after project after project, it's just been constant ineptitude. And still the people at the top keep their jobs for some reason. I don't understand why. Meanwhile... If this had, had been any other job, they would have been fired. Meanwhile, Bungie st comes out on top. They make one video game for a decade and then get bought by Sony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. I don't know. Yeah. It's just a horrible, horrible show. They honestly would have been smarter to take assets and flip the assets from some of the games. I mean, like I said, some of the outdoor shots that are all CGI look good in the show, where they showed you the cityscape and such. Because, you know, nowadays we oh, have the technology cool. to make that shit look good. You can whip that up in fucking Unreal Engine. It's not anything amazing, but yeah, it's possible. It, it's not amazing, but it's still, it looks so much better than any time they are inside. And it is a real set with real props. And all I can think the whole time is that styrofoam. That armor is entirely made of styrofoam. And it's very apparent and very bothersome to look, to watch these like three gigantic hulking Spartans walk around in a carnival costume, essentially, that like cosplayers <laughs> make at home. The show absolutely <laughs> could have just been 3D animated and probably would have been just fine. People would have been perfectly okay with that. But 3D animated. Yeah. So well, instead of doing live action, like, why not just make it 3D animated? Like, it does. It could look better than the games with the budget it had. But like Shrek? Yeah. Just have <laughs> Shrek show up and talk to the Covenant. 
<laughs> like like they, they have the scene where they're pinned down, and you just hear echoing from the distance, What are you doing in my swamp? And he just fucking takes over the Covenant ship. Yeah. <laughs> the ODST drop in on that cue. Yeah. I mean, yeah. To be fair, I would have I preferred that they commit it to all 3D, because at the, as it stands, it's like 50%. It's 50-50. The aliens are all CG, and it looks like garbage. Sure. The animation, the texture quality even on them, it all looks like garbage. And... Cortana is CG for some reason. I don't know why they decided to make Cortana CG rather is she than I... film an act. All I'm saying is they could have filmed an actual actress and then like put a hologram filter on, on her or something, well, right? So it's not like they could have live action the Covenant though, or the Hunter Worms. I know, for example. I know. That's why I'm saying though, like should have just made it all 3D then, because the real props and such they all look so really shitty. I don't know. I, maybe I'm just fucking making shit up. Maybe there is no way to save this turret. Has it been there, successful? There really wasn't. What? Is it successful in terms of viewership? Uh, it's a I, good question. I couldn't find numbers. I know. I know. Paramount was so confident in the series that they greenlit the second season before the first episode even good premiered. Lord. So they they were really yeah. So we're getting a hell of a lot more. Paramount Plus says Halo TV premiere holds record number of viewers. Well, that's just premiere. That doesn't mean anything. Wait, is that for them? Like, yeah, <laughs> yes. I guess so. Because there's nothing on Paramount Plus apart from like Halo Patrol, TV show boasts record viewership despite fan controversy and now stands as Paramount Plus's most watched series premiere. And then, yeah, yeah. it's only the premiere. You can't find anything. Yeah, that's the, a yeah. premiere, though. That doesn't count because that's mm -hmm. just a ton of people tuning in out of curiosity to see if it's good, and then they count. Yeah, that I, click. I would love to see the viewership drop on this. Yeah, maybe. I did uh, read it. Love to. Maybe they just. I did read a. F Go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say I did read a Forbes article that said that says Paramount's Halo show is not going great, but I don't pay forbes and i'm not turning off ad blocker maybe they're so trying to uh, they're trying article. to sweep it under the rug now because there's a lot of hoopla when the show came out about oh our highest watch show and halo and it, that we greenlit and this and this but now i can't find a single article on how it's doing after that fact yeah it's only getting worse it is quite literally only getting worse um, I read that Forbes article, by the way, Charlie. It's all it says is it's our same it's critiques. Opinion, it's basically yeah. him going, why is this girl in this show? The CG is shit and none of this makes sense. So it's actually a fair review. Yeah, I read it too. Um, yeah, it's just awful. Ah, what a turd. <laughs> mm-hmm. Real stinker. It well, go over to patreon.com. Slash the official podcast if you want to listen to me and Jackson suffer through it every week. Yeah, you'll need to watch it too with us though, so... <laughs> if you really want to <laughs> go through that... So, <laughs> oh yeah, I meant we mentioned this on the recording too. Someone actually was like, kind of sort of threatening to stop their Patreon subscription if we kept this up. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, this, is what, this isn't what we pay... Uh, this isn't what we pay for when we support you on Patreon. This is a smart man here. <laughs> he needs to be promoted. <laughs> Are we still, like, the podcast is still there. It's not like we replaced <laughs> it with Haley of Viewings. Yeah, just we just apparently the show is so offensive to the senses. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I didn't blame him. Okay. Uh, let's segue. Jackson, I saw you put something in our topics. EDP is back. He's back, baby. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. He's back. Right, and he's brought, I think we went over this a while ago, actually, that he was teasing that he was making a website. Do you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. it, it, he had, like, a countdown. Uh, this was after the... Uh, I don't know. Wasn't that, like, hacked allegations. or something? No, it wasn't hacked. I, they're not allegations. He, he pretty much confirmed that he was... Uh, grooming, well not grooming, but trying to groom I, a 14 I year old. The, I didn't mean the grooming, I meant the website that he was teasing. I felt like that was someone else's thing or at least a certificate was expired and it was a really shady website. Maybe? I don't remember that, but regardless it's up now and it's an actual EDP website. If you go to edp445.com it links to an actual website where he is advertising his cameos. He's uh, saying that he's going to be posting videos on Instagram and TikTok, which is a very dangerous 
premise. I don't think you should be allowed mm. on TikTok. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there's there's new videos for fans. You can order a cameo. Links to YouTube uploads. He's a uh, advertising live streaming coming soon as well he's going all in and if you scroll down the best part is that you can leave comments uh these comments have to be approved by edp 445 before they're posted to these website but if you scroll through them they're all incredibly positive po- like incredibly positive messages until you read the uh names of who's posting them there, there's uh po- <laughs> there's, there's comments from people like Jeffrey Epstein, for example, or I love 13-year-olds, 445, <laughs> or Mr. Pedophile. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Peter File has my favorite comment that I saw on there. Okay, if I could, could I take yeah. a moment to read that one? I yeah, love that one. It. So th- from Mr. Peter File, and pay attention to the first <laughs> letter of every sentence I'm about to say. People love to hate. Everyone deserves a second chance. Don't let the haters get to you, King. One step at a time. <laughs> uh, there's a little secret message in there for you from Mr. Peter File. Thank you, Mr. Peter File. <laughs> EDP supporter from the very beginning. <laughs> yeah, man. So he's, he's putting no effort in actually reading these messages. If, as long as they're vaguely positive, he'll just post, he'll just like approve of the message, even if it's from an account called Roblox Official. Or uh, <laughs> who, who else is Review there? Review Tech USA, Joe Biden, Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. So, some of them are like genuinely, I don't know if they're like botted, but they're genuinely positive messages from people like with usernames like Biggest EDP Fan. Those could so just they, they be, be either yeah, botting or self botted. self-promoting yeah, messages. Him, yeah. yeah, like did you yeah, did you check out the system? Is there any verification you need, or can you just type your name and your message? Because it could just be EDP for hours on end being like, uh, big EDP lover says, uh, you the man, King. Yeah, well, if that if they were all him, he wouldn't be putting names like Jeffrey Epstein and such. Oh no, yeah, there's definitely people or fucking e- with him. Yeah, but in terms of verification, yeah, you can't ju- like if you put down a message, you have to leave a name and an email address, and then it's it has to be approved by the webmaster, which I assume is EDP, and so it's only posted once he approves it. But yeah, he's back. How are we Thank all feeling God. about that? Hey. It's about time. You know who else is back? Is Belle Delphine. Huh? She left. That's a bit of a that's a bit of a turn. Yeah, but what do you mean she left? Where did she it's been go like two to? years. I didn't know that. Where'd she go? She just stopped using the internet. Oh, good for her. She, she talked about it on our show. Yeah, she, she literally said exactly what she was gonna do. She was gonna release porn and then quit, and she did. Oh. But she posted last night saying like, she just made a post saying like it's good to be rich or something. So that's all? That's all that she said? She's, she's back. She's, yeah, she's not actually coming yeah, back? Well, it's still the first thing she's even said since two years ago. It's a bit odd that it happened at the same time as EDP. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if they're correlated. Are you trying to make a connection? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yaldo Feet saw EDP come back and was up? like, I can't let this stand. I have to return. They're calling <laughs> the to me. <laughs> Did he even ever, like, so what came of the grooming stuff that he got caught for? Uh, nothing. He just lost his platform everywhere. But he didn't face That's any it, legal like, trouble. Hmm. No. Vigilante predator hunters never lead to an arrest, unfortunately. Yeah. Is it, is grooming... Yeah, that's true. Is grooming just... I, I, I don't know. Is what he did technically illegal? Did, did he... Oh, yeah. It is? Very okay. much so. Oh, yes. I, I didn't so. remember the details of what he did specifically. I don't remember if he was in that gray area of like, no, I didn't do anything. Okay. No, so what he say, did was is, is okay. grooming illegal? <laughs> yeah, is, not, yes. not the best way to phrase it, but I didn't remember what EDP did specifically. So he basically was messaging more than one woman, I'm pretty sure. One more, more than she was, what, 13, Charlie? The, he believed that he was communicating with a 13 year old. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was yeah, sending well, her shit pics and dick pics and stuff, which is incredibly oh, illegal. Oh yeah, that's I don't know about super the shit illegal. Pics, okay, but the the dick I, pics is I definitely I just didn't illegal. remember they, if it was that kind of like gray area where he's like, "No, I was just talking to them. I thought she was older, etc." But if he's if he's sending no. a known child dick pics, that's fucked up. Yeah. And then also meeting yeah. up with her, mm-hmm. like setting up a time to yeah, meet up with her, and then they okay. caught him. Yeah. 
caught him going there to meet up with him. <laughs> yeah, I remember he, that part. Earth, right. He didn't even he didn't even argue against it either. He was like, "Yeah, I'm here. I'm here for that 13 year old." Basically, <laughs> <laughs> she said, "Just gonna give me some cupcakes." Yeah, he's still got his Instagram up. The Instagram still up, and like I said, a TikTok. So I don't know what happens here. I don't know why he hasn't faced legal uh, ramifications for his actions. I would assume that internet people are like constantly telling the police. Yeah, they track that guy down everywhere. I I don't know. I don't know how he's not facing any kind of repercussions. The only thing I could see is that like the, the predator, I forget what they were called, but the people, the YouTubers that were doing the, um, hunting of him i guess they like bungled the document keeping and made it an impossible minefield for the actual prosecutors to make a case out of it right we did talk about that i remember that that wouldn't surprise me it's not the first time it's happened but it's a shame yeah yeah because it's not like these people are doing it um not professionally, but properly, like to catch a predator used to do in cooperation with law yeah, enforcement. Cooperation. It was all yeah, done exactly. prim and proper. There's literally just a bunch of like white trash YouTubers who do this for clickbaiting. Uh, well, he was like, guess, a, like in, the guy that was doing uh, it was just, like just a view baiting racist, basically, from what I remember. Yeah, I, guess yeah, so. I feel like it would be much easier to argue and somehow like find a loophole out of this for him than if it had been done with law enforcement rather than after the fact i mean it could also be the case that those youtubers didn't ever even report him officially you know maybe they just well, didn't some, the someone after had, they got their views someone has had to surely by now <laughs> they're, like they're tracking him down to every job that he gets now and like getting him fired from each of his jobs which what <sighs> The balls on this man to actually come back to the internet in any capacity, though, when he's yeah. a known pedophile now. It, that's that's the most disturbing aspect to me. Like, he's pretending like he can just come back and, like, close his eyes hard enough and it'll all go away. And he'll just be able to be a successful uh, internet personality again. It's so weird. Anyway, we'll Andrew. We'll see how that goes, yeah. I guess. Is there anything you can tell me that uh, about that's not weird, perhaps? God, do I want to? I've been waiting. And not illegal. I've been waiting all episode. I just we start this fucking show and we talk about mm-hmm. stuff, and it's like here's a bad TV show, and I'm like, boy, am I not just interested? And then there's like, here's a YouTuber who did a bad thing, and I'm like, oh, ho hum, yesterday's news. But then one of you boys whispers, maybe in my DMs, maybe in my ear, hey. How about Indochino? And I go, oh my god, Ooh. my the electricity jolting through my veins, flowing through my bloodstream. My body is ready for Indochino. Let me tell you folks something out there listening. I went to a wedding about uh, three weeks now, three weeks ago, I think, and it was like a like a semi formal wedding, so people had to dress up. And I went, uh, you know, what's going to be simple and fun? I'm going to go dressed as my icon profile picture. And I did. I went to the wedding as my YouTube profile picture with that little fucking jacket and suit. And I put on a tie. Sunglasses? Sunglasses, too. It was outdoors, actually. Yeah. And um, I felt really good. I felt really smooth. I felt really suave. And, like, everyone else looked nice. And I thought, man, does it feel good to have a custom-fitted suit just available on demand? Let me tell you something. You can get that same feeling. From Indochino, because they are going to help you with high quality custom fitted suits, shirts, and casual whale. Uh, Excuse me, casual wear, not casual (laughs) whale. That's a different company, but casual wear. That's that's Indochino. And it's all at a surprisingly affordable price for such luxury, nice quality items that you'll be finding. God knows where else at God knows what prices. I mean, let's be honest. Clothes are extremely marked up. We know this. This is a fact. Like, it's just simple materials made in a factory in a lot of places. And you pay a lot for pretty garbage stuff. But Indochino is going to make sure that their suits start from just $4.29 for a whole suit. And their dress shirts, just $79. Indochino offers completely custom-fitted suits, casual wear, and more. 
I'll make sure that each piece is made to your exact measurements, and you can customize every detail, like the fabric, lapel, monogram, statement linings, all that other fancy stuff that when you walk in the board meeting is gonna make everyone go, wow, is that Indochino? And because you're a successful businessman with a tailored suit, you're gonna say, yes, I bought them this morning. Good for you, rich listener. This season dressed to impress on every occasion with Indochino. Get $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more by using code OFFICIAL at Indochino.com. That's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com, promo code OFFICIAL. And while you're looking sharp, when you finally got that outfit on, you can look down at your cufflings or look at your like jacket on top of your shirt or maybe look at your pants or whatever you're wearing and just say, my God, I think I can do anything. But I still have to listen to people. Oh, God. Have you ever listened to people? Isn't that the, the worst? worst? I it's, hate it. It's mm -hmm. the worst. People talk and they say things. Imagine being someone who just like says things to other people, whether or not they want to listen. Imagine going out in public to a shopping mall or maybe a concert and overhearing another conversation. Ugh, who wants to do that? Cringe. Oh yeah, cringe, embarrassing. Oh no, no, no. But with Raycon wireless earbuds, you can listen to whatever the fuck you wanna listen to. Let me tell you, no matter how much you shake your head, no matter how much you get crazy, no matter how much you wind sprint away from the nearest crowd so you don't have to listen to them, the Raycom wireless earbuds will not fall out of your ears. Their everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. There's also an awareness mode in case you do for some reason want to listen to other human beings near you, which is super convenient if you're, say, walking down a busy street, or maybe on the subway and one of the homeless people starts ranting about something crazy like the Halo TV show is good. You can push a button <laughs> and you'll be able to tune in. All four of us own Raycons and we all use them regularly. I know this for a fact. I've been to Charlie's house and I trust what Kaya and Jackson say to me. I wear them when running because they do stay in place. Very nice. Works when you're athletic. Right now, official podcast listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash op spelled OP. That's buyraycon.com slash OP. Save 15% on Raycons. Buy Raycon.com slash OP. And instead of something being OP, I want to talk about something that's okay. It's okay for you. It's okay for anyone listening. It's okay for Taylor Swift. Because let me put let me put it this way. Using ExpressVPN is like buying tickets to a Taylor Swift concert, but only being allowed to watch the opening act. Now, what does that cryptic phrase mean, you might be asking? Well, what if you hop on Netflix one day and you go, I want to watch Halo TV show. Well, that's a bad idea because it's on Paramount Plus. But what if you hop on Netflix and say, I want to watch The Office, that show that Reddit can't stop talking about? Well, <laughs> you might not be able to watch it because you might not be in the proper location for the licensing rights for the streaming service. But with ExpressVPN, you can go anywhere on the planet. You can be anywhere that you want. You can tell the internet that you vacationed in, oh, I don't know, England, and no one could say you're wrong because they'll check your server and hack into your computer like they usually do, and they'll go, my God, he actually is coming to us from England. And they'll believe you. But when they try to hack your computer, as soon as they see that little England, boom, shut down. It's off. It's done. Because ExpressVPN is also going to help you with internet privacy and keeping your devices secure. You're going to stream in HD with zero buffering. You're going to gain access to thousands of new shows. You're going to stop paying full price for streaming services while only getting a fraction of the content. Be smart. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash official. Don't forget to use the link at expressvpn.com slash official to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Stop watching only like some shows. Watch every show with expressvpn.com slash official. Hell yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you to the sponsors of this episode. Yes. Thank them. I like money. 
same Z's. Mm-hmm. Mm. I saw a secret to Dumbledore. I saw a secret to Dumbledore. What was the Could've secret? Wait to get that out. Could you? Hey, no uh, spoilers. No, what was the secret? Spoil it. I don't care. What was the secret? I so I saw this movie and was so insulted. I went <laughs> home and immediately made a stream called "Just Saw a Horrible Movie" and ranted about it for an hour. <laughs> it's, it's so bad. It's so fucking bad. It's so unbelievably fucking bad. I heard people saying that it was surprisingly good. I don't know. They had to be lobotomized or fell asleep or something. I don't know. It's because it's one of the very few times in a movie theater where I genuinely considered leaving. Uh, it was <laughs> wow. miserable. Oh, no. Yeah, you've seen, you've was, seen some bad movies, too. Did and, you go by and yourself? stuck around for it. No, I went with Tiana. The main reason I didn't leave is because I know she didn't want to, even though she also just didn't like it that much, but could tolerate it. She was fine with it. Wow. I remember the second movie was really bad. The the second movie was really bad. This one was worse. Uh, So the main thing that's wrong with it is there's only three scenes in this movie that matter. Everything else is the main characters doing nothing. Uh, Like, actually nothing. So... I, I'm just going to get into spoilers so I can rant again, actually, if you guys yeah, don't mind. For, I, I, just I want you to I'm spoil it, please. So, uh, the opening scene is uh, Newt is getting a chillin, and a chillin, as they explain in the movie, is a beast that chooses the next magic president. And they explain <laughs> the chillin is able to look into the hearts and see the good of good in the candidates for presidency, and, that's, and if it bows to you, it means that Wait. you're super good. Wait, what if the chillin's like... Paid by uh, lobbyists or whatever. Well, to here's the, the thing, Jackson. Yeah. Oh, so, no, I've spoiled it for myself. Yep, so Grindelwald, in all of his evil ways, steals the chillin' from Newt. No! Uh, but there was a second chillin' that was born twins, but oh, it doesn't matter you. right now. Grindelwald steals that chillin' using Ezra Miller's character, uh, Credence, and Grindelwald kills it, and then brings it back from the dead using necromancy because he knew the chillin' wouldn't choose him because he's not super good. So that was his plan. Um, And the main characters do nothing to stop it. So what happens is Dumbledore says that he gets all these people together like Newt and Jacob Kowalski, all of them. And he's like, okay, the guy can kind of see into the future now. So the only way we can combat this is by having no plan. That's the best defense against being able to see the future. And he wasn't exaggerating. They had no plan. They didn't do anything. So what ends up happening is for about an hour and 40 minutes, the characters accomplish nothing. Absolutely Well, what are they doing during all this time? Pretty much nothing. So, like, Theseus, Newt's brother, gets kidnapped for about five minutes. So he spends five minutes breaking him out of jail. And that's, like, their bonding moment. And that's, like, the only scene they even talk to each other in. That doesn't uh, even sound relevant to is, the, like, even it's not. objectly relevant to the presidential election Hang on. you were talking about. Yeah, Jackson wanted Why a real political chillin'? thriller. He was disappointed yeah. by this film. Yeah, with the assassinations and shit. But why does the chillin' have that authority anyway? So what if Grindelwald says no, and he just takes over by force? He can't because... It's a democratic process of choosing the new leader. Ah. Well, first of all, you guys are overlooking the glaring what issue. What if he just says no? What if it's just a coup? What if he just says, I don't care what their chillin' says? Fuck I don't, him. Kaya, I don't know what happens then. Kaya, J.K. Rowling was too wine drunk. If you want to watch a movie about that exact premise, go watch the Star Wars prequels. They answer those okay. questions for you. But but anyway, Kaya, you guys, are, you guys are overlooking <laughs> one of the big things. Grindelwald in this movie is currently standing uh, as a genocidal maniac. Everyone knows he is <laughs> trying to kill all muggles and reform the world. Oh, he can still run for it? Yes, so the, he, the way he's <laughs> able to <laughs> run... Old, so it's the old Magneto thing. Isn't uh, Grindelwald no. played by Mads Mikkelsen? <laughs> yeah, Mads Mikkelsen does well. I, I like Mads That's Mikkelsen. That's a shame. I, I like that guy too. That's a shame. Yeah. No, and it's not even... Like a situation like that, he is able to run simply because one of the guys is like, eh, "I guess we could just let him run. We can overlook his crimes." It, like that's it. it like it, that's what they decide. And the main cast, in order to stop this, their plan for making him not run was uh, Dumbledore told Newt to go up to the guy who makes that decision and say, "Do the right thing, not the easy thing." That was the extent of their plan. And when he didn't do the right thing and did the easy thing, they were out of plans. So they end up just sitting by in the sidelines, watching it all happen until the very end of the movie. The very, very end of the movie, 
when the chillin' that he killed and brings back bows to him like he ordered it to do, no one speaks up, mind you. Like, they're just like, oh my god, he's gonna be the president of the magic world, he's magic dictator now because the chillin' bowed. They all watch, ten feet away, and no one says anything until inexplicably Credence, who is a bad guy, says he's lying, that chillin's dead, and not five seconds later that chillin' dies. <laughs> just literally croaks. So regardless of him intervening, it would have just died on the spot. But no, for no reason, Newt, who is watching, and no one else who knows that that chillin' is dead and that the real chillin' is with them, uh, and that there's a real chillin' out there, no one says anything. They just let it happen until Credence is like, it's dead and he's a liar. And then Credence basically dies. Be so the secret of Dumbledore the is that... The secret of Dumbledore is that Credence is a Dumbledore. Ezra Miller yeah. plays a Dumbledore. But it's the most useless plot point because he's only in, like, four scenes in the film. He was originally tasked in the beginning to kill Dumbledore in a fight scene that lasted three minutes. Dumbledore beats him. And then Dumbledore <laughs> goes over to him and says, we didn't know about you. So Credence is his brother's son, uh, Abathor, which is Albus Dumbledore's brother, had a son and they didn't know it. So Credence has daddy issues. He's like, why didn't you guys ever come for me? I hate you guys. So wait, yeah, that's why he turns to the dark side. Wait, 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 wait. Albus Dumbledore's <laughs> brother's side. name is Albathor? Ab Abathorth, Abathorth. Uh, okay, so his his brother's name is just his name, slightly. Yeah. Wait, can you call oh something up? I thought <laughs> Grindelwald was played by Johnny Depp. Did they fire him? Yeah, yeah they, they kicked him out after the Amber Heard stuff. Yeah. Oh. Wait, he got abused and then kicked out of his movie. So, well, yeah, it, was oh, it was during God. the time period where they thought Amber was the uh, victim. Oh, uh, okay. So wait, what's their in-universe excuse for that? That he just used a shape-shifting potion and now he's Matt Mickelson? The Grinchel didn't bow to him. No, they don't. So address they it. don't address it. <laughs> no. Why would they? What, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, just like an excuse, like, hey, how come you look different now from the last movie? Oh, I just I had to give up that identity or a different face to go undercover. Anything? What's the potion that changes how you look? All they could have done that. Yeah, yeah. You could have taken apologies. Yeah, like, it could have been a one-sentence throwaway explanation for why they had to recast the dude. That's yeah, weird. Yeah, they didn't. It, the, um, I, I'm, I, I still can't wrap my head around this fucking movie. Uh, it's, so Jacob Kowalski, which is the, the muggle, in the beginning of the movie, they make this massive fucking deal about how integral he is to Dumbledore's plan. And he doesn't do anything. Dumbledore gives him a little piece of shit wand, like a little twig, and the only thing Kowalski contributes in this movie is while they're having dinner after Grindel Grindelwald is cleared of his crimes to run for president, he's like, I don't like this. So he pulls out the wand and they label him an assassin. And that's it. <laughs> after he's labeled an assassin, it's not even a plot point ever brought up again. And that is the only thing he does. Other than that, he carries a, a briefcase once as a diversion. And that's his. It's the entire extent of his role in this movie. It's fucking crazy. It makes so no was this, sense. Did the story end? Did they pick a president? No. Well, they. Oh my god. So they they get the other chillin finally, and the way they get the other chillin is they just walk it up in a briefcase, uh, which they used a bunch of diversions for, and then just have a character that already had it there. But they get the chillin out of Newt Scamander's briefcase, and he's like, "This is the real chillin, and it's going to choose the real president, since the other one literally just died in front of us." And uh, it chooses Dumbledore to no one's surprise. But Dumbledore's like, you need to choose again. There's someone here with an equally good heart, equally worthy. And the movie hype, or the movie set it up to be Jacob. And I was like, oh, so this is Jacob's role. This is why A Dumbledore needed him. Yeah, this is why Dumbledore needed him, because he has such a good heart, the chillin' will choose him. And in a previous scene at Abbotsforth's bar, the chillin' is like rubbing up on Jacob. Jacob's being really playful with the chillin'. The chillin's like getting excited for Jacob. And that's when they explain what the chillin' does. The characters are like, the chillin' chooses the magical president because it sees the good in people's heart, much like Jacob over there. It can see such a pure soul. It, you know, it sees, you know, how incredible someone can possibly be. And right before the election, Dumbledore pulls Jacob aside and he's like, you have one thing that very few men will ever have, a full heart, a pure heart. Oh my God. And that's the last word that Dumbledore has with Jacob and the second to last time we see Jacob. And then fast forward to when the chillin' comes out, it chooses Dumbledore and Dumbledore says, there's someone here with another full pure heart. You're like, it has to be Jacob because Dumbledore just says that. 
But what ends up happening is it walks by Jacob and chooses a nameless character that hasn't had a single line that happened to be running for president. <laughs> it chooses her. What? That's the new, yep, that's the new president. She didn't I have thought a you were going to say Newt. No, yeah. it, the, the lady didn't have a single line, and I don't even know her name. I think her name was Los Santos. She <laughs> didn't say anything. She That's didn't a city in line. GTA. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. She, that, I'm pretty sure that was her name. You can only get her name because there's a couple of posters that weren't Grindelwald, so you're like, okay, one of them has to be her. She doesn't have a line in the film, so you have no fucking clue why she gets chosen at all. She doesn't do anything. She doesn't have a fucking single presence in this film. Even though the, the movie shows you that it's probably gonna be Jacob, like that's the twist, like you don't have to have magic in your heart. A full heart is better than magic, you know, like that could be the takeaway. But instead it just chooses a wizard that has said and done nothing. It's so stupid. So it's the so, chillin' is just a simp? <laughs> yeah, it's so stupid. I couldn't believe it when it walked by Jacob for that. And Jacob just got hit with one of the deadliest curses in all of wizardry. <laughs> after after <laughs> Grindelwald gets temporarily chosen as president, where it's supposed to be about the good of good, the first thing, I shit you not, the first thing after it's like the chillin' shows him because he's such a good guy, first thing he says is, the war against muggles starts today. And then he pulls Jacob to the stage and hits him with the Crucialis curse, which is a curse that was so forbidden and so scary that even saying it used to be a problem in the Harry Potter universe. And he just blasts Jacob with it like it's nothing in front of <laughs> On everybody. live television? Yeah. On live television. Are you talking about the Cruciatus spell? That was the Yes, yeah. The Cruciatus curse, however you sell, uh, say it. Yeah. It's he the hits one that's him like Jacob is right? dead. Yeah, it's torture. No, Jacob's not dead. It, it just makes him seize up. And then the lady who gets chosen president does undo it. <laughs> Luckily, I guess. That's, I guess that's the only thing she does. <laughs> and, and, yeah, that's it. it you know, that's, that is, nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. It's so fucking stupid. And then the most egregious crime of this film is, uh, if you've seen the other two, you know Dumbledore and Grindelwald were lovers, and they engaged in a blood curse where they couldn't fight each other. So there's this oh, yeah. magical item that makes it so they can't fight each other. And they establish early on in the film that it cannot be broken. And if there's even a thought of aggression between the two of them, it'll kill them. But at the end of the movie, Grindelwald, in an act of rage, sets off an av Avada Kedavra, and <gasps> Dumbledore blocks it. And he blocks it, and it breaks the fucking blood curse. And then they fight for three minutes before deciding they're not going to fight again. It breaks this blood <laughs> curse, which was like the number one thing preventing Dumbledore from taking action and being helpful. And his explanation, when Newt asks him, how did it break? How did you break it? He says, uh, I don't know. I guess because Grindelwald wanted to destroy and I wanted to protect. And then he throws it aside. That He, uh. he doesn't know. J.K. Rowling Wait. doesn't know. Yeah, no, she's she's winging it. But so the way the blood Does. curse broke was by doing the one thing the blood curse was meant to prevent. Yeah, he, <laughs> yes, he fought Grindelwald. He blocked a spell. That is like it, rule number one: you can't do with that that blood curse. But for so some reason now, because he was trying to protect someone else, it broke the blood curse. So what's the result of their three minute dude. fight? Like, what happens? Grindelwald yeah, gets away. So uh, okay. that, that uh, fight blew that fight blew me. Does blew anything me away. happen? Okay, does the story progress in any way? No. Yeah, no, it sounds no. like the, the better oh, writing. Yeah. No, wait. It sounds no, like the better writing would listen. have been that once he finally snaps and tries to kill Dumbledore, the blood curse kills him, and it's like, aha, got you. Well, no, something. I was meant to kill both of them, though, if they fought. Or they, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know, something. Like, it, something needs to happen. I'm getting pissed. Nothing. I'm yeah. not kidding. This movie has nothing happened. There's only three plot points that set the world forward, which is the magical president that just got elected with a fucking goat. Uh, um, Dumbledore is she assassinated or anything afterwards? No. Or is no. it just Dumb over? Dumbledore is now able to fight Grindelwald, who gets away by just putting up a bubble and falling off the cliff. Uh, and the, you asked about the results of their fight. A, is this a scenario like The Hobbits, where they were trying to s stretch one book out into multiple movies? No, so these they are, had to just have m movies where nothing these, happens? These aren't based on the books. There was one Fantastic Beast book, and since then, J.K. Rowling's just been fucking winging it. She uh, stretched it out to wait, seven. Is she even movies, involved then? Yeah, I'm so she, confused. She, she's the she, writer. She had writer's credits for the first two, but only a um, uh, associate producer or something for this one. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how directly involved she was. So if even she she's was, 
she's washed her hands off this. Yeah, Even no, she was like, okay, stupid. It's so bad. <laughs> and she had the audacity to say that it has to be five movies. This movie served as just like a filler piece, but it doesn't add anything or do anything. It is the genuine biggest waste of time I've ever experienced in a movie theater. It's so bad. I, I want to talk about the Grindelwald Dumbledore fight one more time. <laughs> they enter like this time slip space. So they go to heaven for a second and they're fighting <laughs> in the clouds. And for no reason, as they're fighting, they both have the wands at each other's throats and stop and walk away. And Grindelwald says, who will love you now? And that's it. Then Grindelwald puts Aww. up a bubble and falls off a cliff. That's it. <laughs> so what, they broke up? Yeah, I guess. It's but the, were so... they still together before that in some weird way? No, like, because Dumbledore kept trying to stop him. And multiple times Grindelwald had tried to have him killed with Credence. It's just, it's so stupid. And then there's another character they introduced. I can't remember if his name's Karma or Kama. But his whole thing was Dumbledore recruited him as part of this ancient bloodline to infiltrate Grindelwald's ranks and spy on him. So he goes to Grindelwald and he's like, I'm here to spy on you. And Grindelwald's like, you are here to spy on me. And he says, but I actually want to be on your side. And he's like, do you want to be on my side? He's like, oh, well, yes. But you killed my sister and that's hard to forgive. So then Grindelwald brings out Queenie, who is Jacob Kowalski's love interest. Ooh, oh my god, I didn't even get to that. Queenie joins Grindelwald because Grindelwald, or because Queenie and Jacob can't be married legally, thanks to an ancient rule in the wizarding world where muggles and wizards can't coexist, or can't, like, co-create, pro procreate together or whatever. So Queenie goes to Grindelwald in order to abolish that rule. But by the end of the movie, since Grindelwald wasn't elected, that rule <laughs> was never overturned, and for some reason they still get married. So that wait, was completely wait, wait. What? what? That doesn't make sense. Why would why would Grindelwald, the Muggle genocide, yeah. overrule a, a rule or abolish a rule that I forbids don't like know. interracial marriage between Muggles and wizards? Why would she I trust him for that? No, plus but he cruciated him as well. <laughs> like, well, that was down the stage. <laughs> yeah, right in front of that. <laughs> that was a little later. But she joined because apparently that was going to get rid of that rule or something. Uh, whatever. Oh my God. But again, by the end of the movie, since Grindelwald doesn't win, that rule is still in place. So she still is having the same problem that she would have had had she not joined Grindelwald. So her joining was useless because she could still just marry him anyway. But what? regardless, I'm getting lost in the sauce. Her only role in this film was when that guy shows up to spy on him. Grindelwald tasks her with reading his mind, which is what she does, and see if he's, he's telling the truth. And she just goes, yeah, yeah, he's telling the truth, but he's still really mad that you killed his sister. He's like, oh, okay, that's great. So then he takes the memory of his sister out of, uh, of, his, sister out of his head. And now that guy is now in Grindelwald's ranks, only to do nothing. You don't see him again until the end of the movie where they're having like a fight with Grindelwald's people in the city, which is useless because at the end of the movie, Grindelwald's people and the good guys just walk up on stage together. They're in the crowd together. But anyway, Kama, 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 whatever his name is, comes out and it's like this big scene like, oh, he was supposed to spy on him. I wonder if he's gonna be good or bad. Is he on Grindelwald's side? We don't know. And he turns around and hits two guys with a spell. And it's like, oh my God, the big reveal, he was actually, not evil the whole time, which doesn't matter because you never saw him the whole time. He never spied on him. He never helped him. He never did anything. It was totally fucking useless. The character did nothing, literally nothing. He was there for no purpose and had no character development or any role in the film besides just having a single five minute fucking scene where he walks up to Grindelwald and says, yeah, I'm here to spy on you. Like, that's it. It's so stupid. Sounds like Halo with magic it's so much it's so much worse from a story perspective than halo if you can believe that i remember the second movie also felt like nothing happened like it was just meandering on until its conclusion it didn't feel like i'll be honest i thought this was the was second any movie i didn't story. even know it was number three no if you remember in the second movie i talked about that i, I ranted about that one too that's where grindelwald at the end is revealed to be a uh, hitler like he's a, a yeah. magic hitler and then he yeah, kills like, like yeah. half the cast randomly I remember that. Yeah. Or at least one of the girlfriends, I don't know. But it, yeah, that happens. But like all up until that point, it's just meandering. And that doesn't feel like an important plot point at the end anyway. No, that wasn't even addressed was again with his involvement in World War II or anything. Like it, it doesn't it doesn't come up. <laughs> so what about Newt Scamander? What, what does he do throughout the movie? No, he doesn't yeah. do. He does one fucking thing, which is get that second chillin'. 
And that's it. After that, it's just him fucking wandering around with his briefcase. The beasts don't do anything either. So, like, the, the only thing, the like, the only beast that does something is the chill and it doesn't do yeah. it very well. Like, it's he doesn't do anything. No character does anything at all. It's fucking I'm, terrible. I'm still, conf like, heavily confused about why they're using a chillin or whatever it's called to choose the president did they explain it's that explained. rationale just a sorting hat no. i guess yeah but it's this makes the biggest decision in the wizarding world where was the chillin during voldemort like what do you mean like nothing <laughs> makes sense <laughs> was voldemort president i don't remember that <laughs> i i, I had i'm a little spotty on the details but i'm pretty sure if this chillin thing was an established piece of lore voldemort wouldn't have had that crazy rise to power that he did well well, no, I don't think Voldemort Chilin was chose an insurgent, Voldemort. though. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so why, but that, that, then why couldn't so Grindelwald confused. do the same fucking thing? Why does he need to be president? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, why don't they just go over the Chillin's head? Who get, like, kill both of them. <laughs> I, <laughs> maybe this was the final Chillin. Maybe, I couldn't maybe tell you. That. Also, it was really lovely because they were able to bring their own Chillin. Like, Grindelwald brought his own <laughs> Chillin. And no one expected tampering. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point that's like if you bought, brought your own voting machine like use this one I mean. <laughs> don't ask it's why legitimate. the one who's <laughs> gonna pick the new president is my friend Gary I brought him he'll <laughs> pick a good one yeah <laughs> that's so stupid it's like it's like if you brought your own pets, like your literal dog, like, okay, let's see who he chooses, <laughs> me or the stranger <laughs> I don't I don't understand why there's more than one chillin like is only one chillin able to make the vote, or is it like a group vote between all of the chillins usually? It's so dumb. Yeah, no, it, it, would, it would make chillin. sense. Well, apparently it's it would, two of them. It would make sense if the chillin was designated like, okay, this chillin every year, he's the one who picks the president. That one right there, he's the bestest one. But the fact that they can just bring their own and there's like multiple, that then who gives a fuck which one it picks? What if it trips? Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, what if it's fucking stupid and yeah, it votes what if it's for dumb? Hitler to rise up? Good lord. Why? Well, maybe the <laughs> chillin' is so evil. So, so, all right, so you, their mind. you've been incredibly negative, too negative, I'll say, Charlie, about this movie that I haven't seen. Can you give us at least one positive about it? Mads Mikkelsen is very cool. Mads Mikkelsen. That guy's yeah, great at everything he is, but he always plays like shit roles, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, to be fair, it's a fucking Harry Potter movie. I wouldn't necessarily say no to that. You, you wouldn't go in oh, probably I don't blame him. it's going to be a shit role. Yeah, I don't blame him, but I'm just, I feel bad for him because he gets these roles in major movie franchises. Like, he was a Marvel too, remember, in the Doctor Strange movie? And he played, like, I don't know, he was just the lamest villain, and they killed him off in basically 10 minutes. It's, like, such a shame because he's such a great actor. He is such a good actor. I'm going to have to wrap this up here, boys. i got to head out. Alrighty. Sounds good. Thank you guys for listening to this week's episode. We'll, uh, we've got a Patreon, patreon.com slash the official podcast. Like we said at the start of the episode, you can go check us out watching Halo. Um, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Go join us there. We've also got audio platforms. Listen to us on Spotify if you want. And also upvote us on uh, Apple iTunes whatever the iTunes thing is called Spotify uh, yeah that's it mm-hmm mm -hmm. yep thanks everyone bye bye bye, bye.